I'm back. Thanks so much for welcoming Rickus for his inaugural episode of Hot News. I'll put a poll here for you all to let me know if you want him back in future episodes. I appreciate you guys giving me the time to recover. Let's say it just wasn't pretty because I was like a taco being squeezed in the middle. I'll leave you with no more expressive imagery than that. I've missed a lot, so let's just jump into Hot News. Also, for anyone who thinks I take too long to get to the topics in the title, timestamps are always provided below for you to skip to whatever you're interested in watching. But we have four pieces of Intel news to start off with today in a fresh new segment called Intel Bonanza. Firstly, there's even more bad news about a new Spectre variant that affects their CPUs utilizing the speculative execution function of the processors. Intel has promised to issue quarterly microcode updates to help alleviate all of the bugs that are scurrying out of the leftover pizza boxes. Links in the description if you want on Intel's detailed white paper on the new Spectre issue. And in more bad Intel news, they've lost one of their executives to AMD. Ashton Martin, I mean Martin Ashton, has left his position at Intel after his time of roughly 21 months with the company. He will now serve as AMD's corporate vice president, serving under the GPU side with Radeon Technologies Group. Obviously, AMD needs all of the GPU help they can get with Raja Kadori leaving Team Red late last year to Intel. There's an odd game of high profile people swapping that's happening as of late, but if anything comes of it, I'm hoping that it just at least means we'll be getting more competitive products in the future. Then in a bit of counteracting hashtag fake news, Intel has released a statement surrounding the fact that they won't be killing off the extreme additions of their CPUs. It had apparently been tweeted by a former Intel architect that, quote, the hashtag extreme edition brand is about to get killed. What a big mistake, end quote. Intel then responded with, there is no change to the branding of the Intel Core Extreme Edition processor and Intel Core X series processor family, end quote, in a response to PC Gamer. So if you heard Intel was killing it off, it's apparently fake news. Or you could read into Intel's comments saying that there is no change, which could mean that there's one coming, but it hasn't happened yet. Depends on which side of the conspiracy spectrum you want. Then, in the last bit of twisty Intel news, in a game dev blog on their own website, they've promoted the use of Vulkan, which has been known as a primarily AMD-focused API since it's been introduced. Maybe not on the CPU side, but Vulkan is basically the offshoot offspring of AMD's pet project of Mantle. Intel stated in their blog, quote, Vulkan APIs are positioned to become one of the next dominant graphics rendering platforms, end quote. Exciting news to hopefully see them push something besides DirectX, which could help utilize more of our computers for much better gaming experience. We'll have to see if their words hold any weight and if we'll be getting more Vulcan games in the near future and whether we'll live long and prosper. I don't even like Star Wars. Why would you reference that? What? Why was that in the script? And that wraps it up for our Intel Bonanza today. Tune in tomorrow and find out what our next segment is. Now it's time for news that I guarantee is also going to be in tech linked because they complained about it on Twitter about how it was announced 30 minutes after they released their last episode. On Monday, Microsoft announced their $399 Surface Go laptop that's supposed to promote a more budget friendly option for consumers. You know what, just go watch TechLink's video on it since y'all accused us of being the same thing. I mean, I guess. I don't know they've included in their video since we release our videos typically before them, but whatever, just go watch it. But in more exciting purchasing options besides the Surface Go, it appears that Lee and Lee's RGB extension cables are available for pre-order on overclockers.uk. They're on sale for 36 pounds right now and are basically the epitome of what a person needs in their PC. I'm buying these, I don't care what you say. Speaking of exciting news, let's go through the best news story we have today. A 50-year-old woman associated with a drug trafficker nicknamed Pirate <laughs> bought Bitcoin from an undercover cop's undercover cop fake boyfriend using heaps of money in a Trader Joe grocery bag was arrested for money laundering. There's nothing more to the story than that, but you're welcome for that description. Check the details down below if you actually want more details on the whole way that went down. Now, WhatsApp will start to show if messages are forwarded or not to hopefully combat fake news, as well as friends who steal other people's quotes or diatribes to seem more intelligent than they actually are. Samsung is reportedly making a Galaxy Watch instead of their gear-branded lineup. Personally, I don't care what they call it as long as they fix their garbage operating system. The gear S3 sucks and is absolute trash compared to the Apple Watch. Facts are facts. I don't make up the news, I just report it. This thing is stupid. 
Samsung also announced they're mass producing 96 layer 32 gigabyte VNAN memory chips, which means we'll be getting much larger capacity SSDs in the near future. In addition to being larger capacity, they're about 40% faster with 1.4 gigabit per second transfer between storage and memory and 33% more power efficient using 1.2 volts instead of 1.8. In future, the 96 layer approach could potentially bring us 128 gigabyte chips utilizing their QLC depth. Now it's Apple time. The discarded fruit company has announced a new head of AI, John Giannandria, can't say that, who personally served as Google's AI head for eight years. He'll be leading the Siri and Core ML team. Then it appears that the Apple car is a real thing and someone was arrested for stealing the secret deets on it. A former Apple engineer was arrested at the San Jose International Airport on Saturday, attempting to flee the company with tons of files pertaining to Apple's rumored autonomous electric vehicle. The employee had been working for Apple since 2015 as a hardware engineer in the vehicle division and was given enough security clearance to access a lot of files on the project. He went on paternity leave in April and then told Apple that he had to return to China to take care of his ailing mother, but there he would be working for a rival autonomous car company. It appears that when he turned in his Apple devices when he informed the company that he was leaving, they noticed that there was a massive increase in download activity in the two months prior. And it appears that he also showed up on the premises during his paternity leave to collect circuit boards and a server from their hardware labs. And he was trying to take all of that back to China, apparently. It appears that he'll be facing up to 10 years in prison and $250,000 in fine for his intellectual property theft. That's the last bit of news of Apple. I mean, that, that crazy story of stealing things and trying to get out of the country. Huh? Good thing they caught him. Nikon has also announced their P1000 bridge camera, which is just absolutely banana hammocks. This insane piece of camera tech features an optical zoom of 125X for an effective focal length of 3,000 millimeters which is just crazy. Just check out this footage of someone zooming in on the moon with this thing. This is the replacement for their P900, which had an optical zoom of only 83 times, giving the P1000 over 50% more zoom power. Just look at the moon from Earth with no telescope or digital zoom. Cray cray. It appears that ASRock has given us a decent idea of when not to expect the next generation of AMD's GPUs. They recently unveiled their updated roadmap, indicating that they'll be bringing out new versions of existing GPUs in August. And their roadmap stops somewhere after February. Some take this to mean that there couldn't possibly be new cards coming before that because ASRock wouldn't be scaling their roadmap out that far without mentioning them, or they wouldn't be releasing new versions so close to an anticipated launch date or it just means that they just scaled it out six months past the release date and it has no implications on anything whatsoever. Your choice on how you want to extrapolate data from a nebulous date chart, I suppose. Again, conspiracy theory side, which one you falling on. But let's move into the juicy NVIDIA GPU topic that we have for you today. And before you all start shouting at me for clickbait, please check the title again. It says next gen GPUs, not next gen gaming GPUs. I didn't specifically title it that way because I wanted to make sure I wasn't talking about gaming GPUs and you understood what you were getting into. So please bear in mind as we move forward that you may have assumed something that was not there and was not implied. Your inference is not my implication, if you catch my drift. But don't fear, this one actually isn't a rumor. It's directly from Nvidia themselves on an official blog post from yesterday. The news part of it is they detailed a partnership that they've embarked upon with Daimler and Bosch to help bring automated cars to reality. A lot of the blog post is detailing the benefits of driverless cars and how much safer and cheaper they can make driving. However, in it, they provide some more details on the technology that will be powering these driverless cars, including talking about next generation GPUs. The technology that they'll be putting in these cars is called Drive Pegasus and was announced sometime last year when Nvidia was detailing the AI focused pursuit of driverless cars. They even gave us the specs, letting us know that it would be capable of up to 320 tops or trillions of operations per second. In the blog post yesterday, Yesterday, they stated that the NVIDIA Pegasus quote uses two NVIDIA Xavier SOCs and two of our next generation GPUs designed for AI and vision processing, end quote. Thankfully, since they're using Xavier SOCs that are a known quantity, we can determine just how powerful these next generation GPUs actually are. Each Xavier SOC is capable of 30 tops of performance, meaning that they equate for 60 tops of the Pegasus Pegasus size overall 320, leaving two, 260 tops unaccounted for. Given that it also uses two next generation GPUs, that means that they likely both account for 130 tops each. As gamers though, we're used to measuring these things in teraflops, which is typically, at least when discussing single precision, which is what gamers care about, 
Teraflops are about one fourth of the tops performance. The Titan V only performs at 55.2 tops, which is well under half of what the next generation cards are supposed to provide. The Tesla V100 manages 60 tops, which is again in under half. Now, it is unclear on Nvidia's side whether the 320 tops is a measurement of its traditional GPU performance, or if it includes a much larger amount of tensor cores that, than what the current Xavier chips have. But it's clear that they're producing new GPUs that will be supremely better than the Volta-based Xavier's that are currently on the market and are going to be in the Pegasus thing over four times the performance to be specific. And as far as the tensor core performance relation to tops, it's a little bit muddled because we don't know the exact relation of how many teraflops of deep learning translates to trillions of operations per second with deep learning. So it's not necessarily a four to one ratio, just like it would be with the teraflops performance of single precision FP16. It's, there's just not enough information out about that just yet, or there is, and I haven't found it. Let me know down in the comments. The implications that this has for gaming though is unclear and whether this faster tech will be brought to the existing Turing launch is also similarly foggy. But we would do well to remember that Jensen is incredibly excited for Tensor Core development for video games and their application for bringing real-time ray tracing to consumers. So it is possible that Turing could feature this speed boost in Tensor Cores or in the actual GPU chip itself. We'll just have to see how this plays out and whether this will actually mean anything for when we're expecting Turing to be announced in August. Let me know what you think of this information from NVIDIA and how their Pegasus GPU setup can actually relate to the gamer side of things. I'm curious what you guys think down in the comments down below. But that's gonna wrap it up for all of the hot news that we have today. Thank you guys so much for being so patient while I was sick. We tried a new host on Monday, then I, it just couldn't get done on Tuesday. But now I'm back, I'm healthy, I'm feeling 100%. We recorded so many videos today. So I'm thankful that you guys are here with me and showing your support by smashing that like button. By the way, do that. Don't forget to do that. If you enjoyed this video, get subscribed, please, to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. It means a lot if you guys choose to stick around by subscribing. That's gonna wrap it up. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Again, where I will be healthy. I guarantee it. Cheers.